Hi everybody, this is Lee and with this video I'm talking about the special election coming up on June 20th, Tuesday, June 20th in South Carolina, the 5th District for Congress. And um, I've been waiting to speak on this uh, race. I've been getting updates from my viewers every once in a while on one of the candidates, Dave Coma. Uh, and I waited to speak on this because I wanted to see who would come out of the other primaries in that race, who Dave Coma would be facing. Uh, Dave Coma is the candidate for the Green Party in South Carolina. But anyway, um, the special election is being held because Mick Mulvaney, the previous can uh, candidate or office holder, uh, was recently confirmed into the Trump administration for director of the Office of uh, budget and management, uh, management and budget. <laughs> and so that's Mick Mulvaney. And Ballotpedia um, likely considers this race uh, safely Republican as the other special elections previously have been. Um, but I suspect that there might be a, a closer margin um, in this race and that we've noticed that pattern. I'm going to post a link to the Ballotpedia page for you to look through and consider uh, as the special election held in South Carolina makes its way through the calendar. And uh, so I waited for the primaries to end. There's one Republican who's a right wing type of Republican. And I've been making several videos challenging on what is considered a conservative versus a corporatist, um, someone who is actually not exhibiting conservative values. Uh, those um, created or inspired by Teddy Roosevelt, who was himself a conservationist and wanted to protect and conserve natural resources, and who was a trust buster who actually challenged large corporations in their treatment of workers. He felt that there needed to be a correct balance between worker rights and the corporations and that he was cautious about allowing too much uh, power to corporations, including monopolistic uh, power. And so that kind of conservative, um, we don't, you know, it's dicey when it comes to, you know, knowing the difference between what is conservative and then what is corporative. Um, there's also a Democratic candidate in this race um, who we can safely say likely is a corporatist. Um, as opposed to a liberal, uh, this is uh, Goldman Sachs, um, former associate, and so he's running for the Democratic Party, uh, the famous Goldman Sachs of the Hillary Clinton transcripts. <laughs> and so we wonder about that mentality if it's corporatist too, and the difference between a liberal and a corporatist, and then also a conservative and a corporatist, that they're very different things. There's also the Green candidate, Dave Colma, and I'm going to speak more on him in this uh, video. There's also a representative from the Libertarian Party, and then one person from the American Party, so uh, independent and third-party representation in this race, and that South Carolina is getting the benefit of a lot of democracy in its congressional election coming up, and that's wonderful. And that is a strong contrast um, to what's happening in the Georgia special election in the 6th District. And this is um, also um, a district that many consider safely Republican, um, and that there's just one Republican in the race and one Democrat in the race, and that many are looking at the Democrat um, trying to wonder if he is indeed a progressive. And according to Bernie Sanders, no. Um, I take Bernie Sanders at his word. He's been browbeaten for saying that, but, you know, truth is truth. And um, while there are some liberal positions, um, is he a corporatist? Um, and it looks like we've got two corporatists in the race in Georgia 6. And that Georgia has um, strict ballot access laws, that they are very vigilant about keeping third-party independent challengers off their ballots, uh, very vigorous in doing that. Although, there is a recent case, and I spoke about that earlier in a video, where there is a court challenge for paper balloting to get rid of the vote machines in Georgia. 
Um, I don't know if that case will be decided um, prior to this election. I'm thinking no, <laughs> but hopefully before 2018. And that regardless if the Democrat or the Republican wins in Georgia 6, if they do not perform uh, following the special election, that they are those, that seat in Georgia is open for contest once again in 2018 uh, for a challenge. And so whoever wins that election must perform. Uh, and so, and so I'm going to return back to the South Carolina race where there's actually more democracy happening, it seems like, more ballot access, more ability to have representation across a wide uh, variation of political ideas and to get a full discussion of those ideas. Uh, South Carolina is very lucky in that regard. And so, um, let's see. Oh, um, I talked about previous special elections and how um, even though there wasn't necessarily a win by a progressive in those races, um, that there was a shifting of the window of ideas to include populist um, agendas, populist policies, and that those who have been running in those races as a progressive, as a populist, have been articulating their ideas. And that even though they haven't won their races in these special elections, they have succeeded in narrowing the gap. Um, whereas there were double digit um, leads by the conservative or Republican or right wing um, candidate in previous elections, that these um, populist progressive candidates have been able to narrow those leads to single digits. And so there is a shift. Um, with the population um, in these right-wing areas of the country. So something is happening, and we'll see what happens in South Carolina's 5th uh, District. And so now I'm going to talk about Dave Colma. Um, as I said, he is the Green Party candidate. Um, his website is votecolma.org, and I'll have that in the description. Um, I also managed to find a little bio, a biography on him. It was at his um, website. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. Okay, and so he calls himself a teacher, a musician, an online video maker, a husband, a son, a brother, a dog owner, and a concerned citizen. <laughs> And so he has a problem with uh, politicians from um, both parties, uh, that they trust bankers, but they seem not to trust the people that they represent. And that this has been happening over and over, uh, the campaign donations and lobbying gifts and the changes in policy um, in exchange for those gifts. And that um, the kickbacks um, uh, must be great and that corruption is apparently legal in our country. And so he says that it's time to uh, get involved and that is why he is the Green candidate for the 2017 special election. Um, okay, and so now I'm going to talk about some of his positions. He's got strong positions on health care. He is for Medicare for All. Uh, public education, he's very supportive of that, the idea that public funding should only go to public schools. And that there's debates about that, that Dennis Kucinich is even questioning the constitutionality of uh, public funding, funding being taken away from public schools and then forced into private school education. Um, in my opinion, it's a type of segregation, a resegregation of our children. Um, the haves and have-nots, um, and a form of taking from the poor and giving to the rich. Um, and so that's his stance on that. Um, there's also a stance by Coma on student debt forgiveness. He wants to extend the bankruptcy law protection to cover student loans. And so these are similar to Jill Stein's positions that she ran on in 2016. They're basically green positions. Um, he's also definitely for housing for all. Uh, he wants to end housing segregation. And then he's also talked about tiny houses. And um, if you want to know what those are, they're kind of like small, compact houses 
that have been built. Um, if you've been to like Home Depot or uh, one of the big box stores, you can see them in the parking lot. They're like tiny shed sized houses with all the regular amenities, um, but simplified and stripped down for low income people. Um, also, he's um, talking about prison reform. Uh, he wants to end the exception clause to the 13th Amendment and close for-profit prisons. He says that no one should profit from caging people or locking people up, um, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and that he also wants to end uh, corporate personhood. Coma has a long list of um, positions, policy positions that are progressive in nature definitely part of the Green Party platform as it applies in South Carolina, all the way from immigration, jobs, infrastructure, peace, national racial justice, social security, taxes, trans rights, women's rights, worker rights. Uh, and so those are what he's for. I'm going to run through some upcoming events that Dave Colma has listed at his site. And I wanted to stress these because I, as I have said, it's really, it's really important for every progressive that's running down ballot to assist in shifting public conversation. The public range of acceptable ideas is very important, very crucial that this happens. And that, um, um, multiple people, a multiple army of people talking to the communities using the platform, their microphone, their access to media, the access that they have for running for office to speak out very strongly and to stay on message and get to their point of view across um, and be able to explain their position, to defend their position, and why it's important and why it's actually the way it needs to be. Um, it's, it's important for um, everyone running for office to be able to speak out and be a part of the movement to change the acceptable range of ideas. We've got this year, we've got next year, we've got all the way up until the 2020 election, and it looks like Dave Coleman wants to do that. He's hosting forums at his campaign office, and so their rock, uh, it says he calls them Vote Coma Rock Hill forums that they take place at his campaign office, which is 109 Hampton Street, Rock Hill, South Carolina. And so there have already been two forums that he's hosted for the public. One was on health care. He had a guest, Dr. Dave Keeley, and it was about Medicare for All. And hopefully um, there's a videotape. If I can find one, I'll put it in the description uh, for people that missed it. Uh, he also recently had a, a housing forum uh, where he spoke about tiny houses, and that was also at his campaign um, headquarters. He's got two more forums coming up at his campaign headquarters. One is on education, where he's talking about the free public college and ending student debt. This is Saturday, June 17th at 3 o'clock p.m., and then he's got another forum which is on prisons, and this is with Max Parkas, Tribal Rain, and Scotty Reed, um, providing the opportunity to learn about ending prison slavery. And this is Sunday, June 18th at 3 o'clock p.m. And so that information will also be in the description. Hopefully you can make it. Um, and I believe that's all that I've got on uh, Dave Coma. Uh, I'm going to let people... Review this, um, go to his website, um, also review the race in South Carolina, the 5th District, to learn the details of that race, and hopefully there will be a shift um, that, as we've noticed um, all around the nation in various um, districts, that there's a change coming, that people are starting to realize the difference between uh, corporatism and what they perceive to be either conservatism or liberalism, uh, progressivism, uh, things like that. <laughs> so on both sides of the aisle, uh, maybe we can go half on a baby, meet in the middle, for, and throw uh, vote third party and or independent, uh, which I think is the place to be. Um, so um, the Green Party has had about a 34% win rate with the races that they've been running um, this year. 
Uh, we'll see what the balance will be as we progress through the rest of the special elections and then on through November. And so I say good luck.